Welcome back friends. Today we're doing something a little different for this channel and I'm kind of excited about it. Um, over the last few months I've been kind of acquiring through gifts and whatnot some cast iron and, and then a friend, I do, brought over a cast iron that needs a little love so I thought I would just make a little video out of it. So let's kind of go over some some issues that I, I kind of see with some of these cast iron. There's nothing that's like tremendously bad about it, but we'll just kind of start off with um, this lovely little Wagner piece that I got for Christmas from my fiance's parents. It's a little corn corn cob corn muffin tin. It's in great shape, but it has just been used so much that there's so much fat and there's other polymerized stuff that's just all in the bottom of these, and I bet we'll have some really nice size kernels once we get all this kind of cleaned up. This guy, I have no idea who made it, what it is, but Rachel found it at a, an estate sale one day and it was a, a good price. So I'm gonna kind of try to bring this back. The one that we're gonna be following in this video the whole time is gonna be my buddy Stu's pan. Um, it's actually in pretty good shape. It just has not been properly taken care of. Um, there's a lot of buildup a lot of carbonization on the outside of it. On the bottom of it, there's some rust spots. So my goal in this is to bring this back all the way uh, to raw cast iron, or at least as close to, as I can get to it, so. There's not a lot of things that you really need to properly restore a piece of cast iron, at least to this degree. There's electrolysis, but we're not gonna get into that, so. I've got this big tub that we'll be using uh, to do a vinegar bath in, so we're going to do a lot. We're going to need a lot of vinegar for this. I'm doing three pieces. You don't need a, a tub this big, though. Um, the first process that we'll be using today is some oven cleaner. This is Easy Off, and this is what a lot of people recommend on forums. We got a trash bag to put all this stuff in, and then we got some gloves just for a lot of this stuff is acidic, so you don't want to burn yourself. And then a Brillo pad, stainless steel, and then. Uh, of a scrub brush. All right, so this first step, super simple. Uh, I got my gloves on. I'm in a well-ventilated room. If I was not demonstrating this, I would probably do this outside because these fum fumes are pretty terrible, but start on the back side of this, and I'm just using the lid of that Tupperware. I can just rinse this off and then not have cleaner all over, all over everything. So I'm just gonna try to hit this as an evenly coated as I can and then we'll flip it over and do the inside. Okay, now time for the inside, and this is gonna, I'm gonna try to really coat this inside pretty well. Like most pans, this is where most of the food-based build-up is at. So now this is just gonna go into this garbage bag. You can see it's already doing some work on it. Gonna sit here. This was probably gonna take 24 hours, whereas I think some of these other ones will probably take about 48 hours. So we're gonna let this go overnight. We'll check in it in the morning and kind of see where she's at. Okay. It's definitely gonna need another day. I'm gonna reapply. Okay, so these are gonna go for another 24 hours, then we'll check back in on and see how they're doing. Okay, so it's been another 24 hours. Uh, I've got all the pans over in the sink. I'm gonna go ahead and get my vinegar bath ready. And so it's gonna be equal parts vinegar to water. So I've got two, three gallons of vinegar kind of hanging on. We'll go ahead and put some of my water in uh, just so I can kind of get a, a reference to how much area volume that it takes up. So I'm gonna get some water. So we got two gallons of water in, so we're gonna go ahead and add two gallons of vinegar. Okay, so it looks like a four gallons, two gallons of 
water, two gallons of vinegar. It gave me enough depth to be able to do the, uh, what I need to do. So I'm just gonna cover this up so I don't have to smell vinegar as strongly. And so I'm gonna get set back up over at the sink and we'll do some scrubbing. My favorite. Okay, so I still need to get this pan dried up. The Easy Off did a ton, a ton of work and got off a lot of stuff, but there's still some stuff that I can't get off by hand, so I'm gonna soak this and retreat it for another day. Uh, the backside's looking a whole lot better. It had a lot of buildup. There's still a little bit, and I could probably get that off by hand, but because I'm gonna retreat this, it will, it'll get, it'll get that in the next treatment, so. Okay, so I just got all of the rest of the grime off of the pan that we've been working on. And so now we're going to the vinegar bath section of this clean and re restoration. So this vinegar is gonna help remove the rest of some of the seasoning and then also any kind of rust that's there. It's just gonna take a lot more elbow grease to get to where we wanna go. But we're gonna do vinegar baths for 30 to 45 minutes and we're just gonna keep doing that and cleaning in between each session until we get the pan to where we would like it to be. So let me grab this pan. So I got a timer and I'm just gonna set the timer and uh, take you along for the ride. So, I didn't get everything off of it, but it's pretty close. I'm just kind of running out of time. So, I'm gonna get this dried out. Okay, so the kind of what is lacking, there's some seasoning on the front and on the back that I wasn't able to get off. If I had some more time, I'm pretty sure I could get that to release, but it's not gonna affect the performance of the pan, so. So to get seasoning, we're gonna use some uh, high temperature oil. I'm using avocado oil. You can use canola or vegetable oil. Uh, just stay away from olive oil. It just doesn't have a high enough smoke temperature for you. So I'm gonna just get everything coated pretty well with it. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna take a fresh towel and kind of remove as much of this oil as I can. I need the standing. It's not going to bind, you know, it's just going to be sticky and a mess. These grill pans are, can kind of be a pain because you got to go through each little groove. This is going to look so good. Okay. So the oiling part of the seasoning is done. I'm going to put this in the oven. It's going to be face side down. And I'm going to set the oven to 475, 500, kind of the higher you can go with your oven, the better results you're going to have with this. And so once it comes up to temperature, I'm going to preheat it with the cast iron there. Once it comes up to temperature, I'll bake it for an hour and then let it naturally cool. And then I'll repeat that step. I think I'm only going to be able to do two tonight, but I would normally do three to four or five to really get that really dark black that everyone enjoys with the cast iron. So. I'm gonna get this in the oven and then uh, we'll see you when it's done. Well, it's the next morning. It was just too late to do any recording last night when I kind of get when I finally got there. I managed to get three coats, three rounds of seasoning on this pan, and it's looking a whole lot better. It still needs a, another seasoning or two to really get it to where I would like for it to be. But you can see the rust is gone. 
there's a little uneven. I think I got a little heavy on one of my coats, but some of the black spots that we were talking about uh, before we started seasoning, they're not really present. They kind of blend in like other than like that one and there's a big line, but other than that, I think it's a pretty successful project. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. You can drop them down in the comments. If you have any salty things to say, keep that to yourself. Uh, I want to thank you for stopping by today. Remember to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Cool.